Welcome to The Late Show, ladies and gentlemen and girl wonder. I... <laughs> They're gonna change the world. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert, and tonight... Thank you, my friends. Thank you very much. And tonight, we are coming to you not quite live after today's January 6th committee hearings. Today's installment was huge. It was gigantic. It was super big... gulp? Because <laughs> the committee painted a chilling and criminally insane portrait of an attempt to steal the election by weaponizing the Justice Department, courtesy of former president Scammy Doofus Jr. <laughs> now... Now, folks... At the start of the hearing, Liz Cheney recapped what we've seen so far. We have seen how President Trump persuaded tens of thousands of his supporters to travel to Washington, D.C. for January 6th. And we will see in far more detail how the president's rally and march to the Capitol were organized and choreographed. That's right, it was all choreographed. A five, six, seven, eight, storm stomp, window smash, kick, ball change, jazz hands, zip tie them. Pow! Yip! Yip! <laughs> Today, yeah, I still got it, baby. Today's hearing was led by Illinois Republican and guy who's just thrilled the Property Brothers gave him a new accent wall. Adam Kinzinger. Kinzinger explained how important it is to keep the presidency separate from the Justice Department. The president cannot and must not use the department to serve his own personal interest. And he must not use its people to do his political bidding. The president cannot pervert justice. Yes, even if the president is technically a pervert. <laughs> now, the key witnesses... These were the key witnesses, right? These are keys? Thank you, friend. The key witnesses today were former acting attorney general and Dobby the House lawyer, <laughs> Jeff Rosen, <laughs> and former acting deputy attorney general, Richard Donahue, seen here getting dumped via skywriting. <laughs> These two guys took over the DOJ after Attorney General Bill Barr saw where the former president's crazy chain was going and said, uh, this is my stop. <laughs> McKinsinger asked Rosen what happened once they took over. Mr. Rosen, on Christmas Eve, your first official day as the acting attorney general, President Trump called you. What did he want to talk about? <clears throat> uh, the same things he was talking about publicly. So, low-flow toilets and windmill cancer? <laughs> no? <laughs> and but keep in mind, this was on December 24th. What a lovely way to spend Christmas Eve. Was the night before Christmas and all through D.C. The POTUS was screaming, the winner was me. <laughs> the conspiracies hung like a stench in the air, as thin and as fake as the president's hair. <laughs> the former president... <laughs> Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap. <laughs> the former president was persistent, as Kinzinger explained. In the weeks leading to January 6th, the Department of Justice was fielding almost daily requests from the president to investigate claims of election fraud. Each claim was refuted time and time again, an effort Attorney General Barr described as whack-a-mole. And when that whack-a-mole didn't work, they would eventually go on to whack Mike Pence. <laughs> so, really? <laughs> Are you just learning that from me right now? So, the new head of the DOJ told the president there's absolutely no evidence that the votes were fraudulent or that the election was stolen. And here's how the president responded. Just say the election was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the Republican congressman. Sure, because that's how the law works. That's why the opening to law and order goes like this. In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. The Justice Department, who accuses a crime with no proof, and the Republicans in Congress, who make up crap to justify it. So, keep in mind... 
What Kinzinger just read there off the DOJ's notes is the heart of the crime, okay? The president knows there's no evidence, and he wants the DOJ to just lie, say that there is evidence of corruption so that his cronies in Congress can overturn the fair election. And at one point, the former president was so spewing so many insane conspiracies, Donahue had to start jotting them down just to keep it straight. I begin taking notes only because at the outset the president made an allegation I had not heard. Um, and of course that concerned us. So I simply reached out and grabbed a notepad off my wife's nightstand and a pen and I started jotting it down. Then later uh, his wife came home and said, Honey, uh, why did you write Hugo Chavez trained dolphins are smuggling ballots into nuclear hurricanes? <laughs> are you having a stroke, darling? Do you smell toast? <laughs> now, as the hearings went on, we learned how the president's desperation led him to make shocking requests. The president was a little more agitated than he had been on the meeting, in the meeting on the 15th. Um, he discussed a variety of election matters. There was a point at which the president said something about, why don't you guys seize machines? Well, that's a very casual way to end democracy. <laughs> hey, guys, why don't you seize all the machines? I'll cancel the elections and just order some secret police for the whole table. You guys want to go halvesies on fascism with me? I hear, <laughs> I hear the brown shirts here are delicious. <laughs> he was told. <laughs> true story. I think it's true story. The former president was told in no uncertain terms by the DOJ and the DHS, you cannot seize the machines. And as crazy as it is to say, none of that was the really crazy part. Because Kinzinger also shared this. The final email here included a completely baseless conspiracy theory that an Italian defense contractor uploaded software to a satellite that switched votes from Trump to Biden. Ah, yes, the Italian space conspiracy. <laughs> and I'm, is this true? I'm being told the Late Show has acquired exclusive footage of the high-tech Italian satellite system. Of course, we dispiace. Of course, they didn't just pull the Italian space hack out of their butts. They pulled that theory out of somebody else's butt because Republican Congressman Scott Perry forwarded a video from YouTube to Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, and Meadows sent the YouTube video to the DOJ demanding they investigate, and they played a clip of it today. And I will say, it started out strongly weird. <laughs> Here's some guy claiming something by someone. There was a certain State Department guy whose name I don't know uh, yet. I guess this is probably going to come out in Italy at some point. And he was the mastermind, not the mastermind, but the, um, but the, anyway, the guy running the operation of changing the votes. And that he was do doing this in conjunction with some support from MI6, the CIA, and this Leonardo group. It's as simple as that. <laughs> your Honor, Your Honor, please. My client couldn't have been there on the night of the murder because he was with, I don't know yet, or come out at some point. <laughs> Anyways, I blame the Leonardo group, or Donatello, Michelangelo, or Raphael. Their payoff was pizza. <laughs> Their code word, cowabunga, heroes in a half shell. Kinzinger summed up how ridiculous the former president's conspiracy theories were. This is one of the best examples of the lengths to which the pres President Trump would go to stay in power. Scouring the internet to support his conspiracy sh theories shown here, as he told Mr. Donahue in that December 27th call, quote, you guys may not be following the internet the way I do. On the toilet with a safe search off? 
<laughs> now... <laughs> when acting Attorney General Rosen refused to interfere in the election, the former president turned to Assistant Attorney General for the Environment and high school principal who's had it with your rap music, <laughs> Jeffrey Clark. Clark had drafted a letter that the former president liked very, very much. Uh, and the letter was intended to be sent to Georgia state election officials, and the letter was going to claim that the DOJ had evidence of massive election fraud, even though they did not. Everyone thought Clark's proposal was crazy, including White House attorney Eric Hirschman. I thought Jeff's proposal, Clark's proposal, was nuts. I mean, this guy said at a certain point, you know, listen, the best I can tell is the only thing you know about environmental and elections challenges is they both start with E. And based on your answer tonight, I'm not even certain you know that. To which Clark replied, of course they don't. Environment starts with an N, and election starts with an L. A uh, duh. <laughs> then, as with all... Then, as with all the ex-president's criminal schemes, it was time to hear about Rudy Giuliani's role. I remember ever recommending to anybody that, um... Mr. Clark, meaning Jeffrey Clark at DOJ, be given election-related responsibilities. You mean beyond the president? That is a long pause. <laughs> but it does take a while to chug a bottle of yellowtail Chardonnay. <laughs> Rudy eventually answered. You mean beyond the president? Correct. <laughs> well, beyond the president, I do recall saying to people that um, somebody should be put in charge of the Justice Department who isn't uh, fr uh, frightened of what's going to be done to their reputation. And if there's anyone who's proven he doesn't care about what happens to his reputation, <laughs> it's Rudy. I say we need someone in charge of justice who won't mind being remembered as a wine-drenched fascist apologist who betrayed his nation next to some discount dildos. <laughs> Rosen. <laughs> it's a great price. <laughs> Slightly <laughs> used. <laughs> gently <laughs> used. <laughs> gently. <laughs> Rosen refused to send Clark's letter to Georgia, so Clark convinced the president to give him Rosen's job as the head of the DOJ. That led to, let's say, a tense meeting in the Oval Office, which the committee illustrated with some cutting-edge graphics. <laughs> Look at those pale, translucent bodies. They cloned Mike Pence. <laughs> at the meeting... At the meeting, Donahue expressed why he had doubts that Clark was the man for the job. I made the point that Jeff Clark is not even competent to serve as the attorney general. He's never been a criminal attorney. He's never conducted a criminal investigation in his life. And he kind of retorted by saying, well, I've done a lot of very complicated appeals and civil litigation, environmental litigation, and things like that. And I said, that's right, you're an environmental lawyer. How about you go back to your office and we'll call you when there's an oil spill. Oh! Damn! This is the Department of Justice, and you just got served. <laughs> hey, hey, Jeffy. Hey, Jeffy, why don't you go screw a protected otter, okay, you grasshole? Isn't there a baby pelican you should be scrubbing with a toothbrush? You want to be helpful, Jeff? Go hump a redwood, you shaved Lorax. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Beto O'Rourke and Station 11's Matilda Lawler, but when we come back, I'll be right here. More monologue about the folks who crime and how they asked the president to get them out of their prime time. Stick around, y'all.